The Brighter Day, brought to you by Drift, America's favorite brand for dishes. Today, your favorite daytime cereal is The Brighter Day, and in about uh, 30 seconds, you will hear The Brighter Day. America's favorite brand for dishes presents The Brighter Day. The Brighter Day. Our years are as the falling leaf. We live, we love, we dream, and then we go. But somehow we keep hoping, don't we, that our dreams come true on that brighter day. And now, the brighter day. Well, the blow has fallen. Papa Dennis has lost his church. Papa Dennis is a clergyman, and the other day, Althea, one of Papa's many daughters, got her picture in the papers under circumstances not too pleasant. Now the vestrymen have decided that Papa must go. Well, the Reverend hasn't yet heard the bitter, bitter news, but Liz has heard it. Liz, 25 years old, the daughter who keeps the family together. Liz is standing there in the old parlor in the Dennis house, trying to get an explanation from Althea about her actions. No matter what you say, Liz, you're not my mother. You're just my plain big sister. And you don't know what it is to have guys run after you and, and take your places. I'm going to be a star someday, and then my picture will always be in the papers. Of course, it hurts me that Papa's been let go. I have to do what's best for Althea, and what's best for Althea is publicity. How could you let yourself be photographed in that place with all those boys? How could you? Oh, well, you won't say that when I'm on Broadway. When my name is up in lights, you'll brag about your little sister, the big star. But what about Papa? He's not young, and he's got all of us to take care of. Oh, not me. I'm not going to stay in this town any longer than I have to. I'm off to New York, to a real town where a girl isn't condemned just because she's got her face on the front page of every newspaper. So I'll be just one less for Papa to provide for. You, Bobby, and Patsy can figure out a way to get yourselves out of this. I know how I can handle myself. A tight skirt and lipstick doesn't get you everything. Well, just because you never tried it, don't think it doesn't work. It's, um, it's helping me get a tryout in a Broadway show in two weeks. There. Now you know. I kept it from you as long as I could. <sighs> Well, I left Papa a note telling him how I can be reached. Just, just let me get my suitcase, and then I'll be on my way. <laughs> Liz, heartbroken, begins to cry and wonders how she can face all these problems. Once again, the answer is Jerry. Dr. Jerry Forrester, Liz's fiancé, 
who has entered quietly while Liz stands there. <laughs> Liz, Liz, there's nothing to be said. Okay, go ahead and cry. How can I tell him, Jerry? How on earth can anyone in this family tell him? I know, honey, I know. Would it be better if I told your father what happened? Oh, no, no, I'm the one to do it. I'll tell him. Won't be easy, poor guy. Oh, it must be wonderful to have such power over people. Father's almost 60. But the royal majesties have spoken. He has a family such as it is, and we're poor. But the breath of scandal in the person of my sister has touched their church. So the royal majesties choose to think. So the sinner must be put to death. And the rest of the family, too. Althea's gone. But will they relent? No, no. They can still call themselves Christians. Oh, golly. <laughs> And I can't say a word for comfort. Oh. Okay, cry, cry, Liz, cry. When Papa walks down the street, even the little kids tag along after him. In the middle of the night, let someone call up here. Somebody's sick. It could be the middle of winter, and Papa goes out. One day, I stopped at the church, and there he was on his hands and knees trying to sew up a rip in the carpet. People don't just tip their hats when we pass in the street. People smile and say, how are you, Reverend? They care. Is it because they know he cares about them? Even Mr. Bliss, Mr. Bliss calls himself an atheist, yet even he tips his hat to Papa. Atheist, oh no, he's a true believer and a better man than the people who have done this to Papa. There's no question about that, Liz. Your father is a saint. He lives like a saint thinks like a saint, his heart is full of love. The world's always rewarded its saints with misunderstanding and suspicion. Yes, and with a cruel death. That's the price of saintliness. Why need it be? What's the good of saintliness if the powerful men are always so cruel? Would you change your father, Liz? Oh, oh no. No, of course you're right. Papa is Papa. I wouldn't change him for anything in the world. And Jerry is Jerry. Oh, thank you, darling. Kiss me once, and then you better leave the Dennises to their own devices. I'm home. Hey, Liz. Oh, yes, my dear. All right, my beauty. I have a million things to say. But oh, how I love thee, funny face. I love the way your ears come out of your head. I love... Would you forgive me? I love even the way your sweet, generous mouth is tremulous at the corners now, not knowing whether to smile at Jerry or weep for Papa. They, they smile for Jerry. They'll always smile for Jerry. Oh, Jerry. Jerry, let me hold on to your arms for a minute. Oh, so very solid. I'd be nothing without these two strong arms of yours, my dear. God be willing, these arms will always be here. Elizabeth Susan Dennis. It's the only thought that keeps me going. Kiss, please. We're out of peanut butter, Liz. Do you mind if I make a... Oh, who's that you're kissing, Liz? Oh, good. It's Jerry. Good afternoon, Patsy. <laughs> Whom does your sister usually kiss? I don't pay much attention. Uh, about the peanut butter, Liz, do you mind if I make a lettuce and tomato sandwich on toast? Peanut butter's gone. Uh, make whatever you want to, dear. I'll be there in a minute. Okay. Then I'll go down to the store and get some more peanut butter. Yes, be seeing Patsy. you, Jerry. Yes, Patsy. Call me up tonight, darling. May I come over? Oh, oh no, darling. Spare yourself. I can't spare myself when you're not being spared. I'll be here. All right. Oh, Jerry, is this what it is to be a weak woman? The sense of reliance I get from you. Where's my courage? You're plenty of woman, Lizzie Dennis. Sometimes you scare me. You're so much woman. God bless you, Liz. And once more, I think it's the dirtiest thing that ever happened. Let me tell you goodbye this way. There aren't any more tomatoes. May I make a bacon sandwich? Oh, are you at it again? <laughs> 
Run along, Jerry. Yes, Patsy. I've called you before I come over. Goodbye, Patsy. Say, uh, what's the square root of 64 million? Huh? I think it's some, um, uh, 8,000. Yes, 8,000. That one's easy. All right. Now, what's the square root of 64 million and two? Think about it. The square root of two is a very interesting mathematical concept. The square root of two is very difficult to arrive at. In fact, I believe the square root of two must be represented by an approximation. It lies somewhere in the neighborhood of one point. Yes, yes, that's fine, dear. Well, there are many interesting mathematical concepts. For instance, the value of pi. What is pi? Patsy, Patsy, darling. Pi is a ratio. What ratio is pi? It's, it's Patsy, pi. Patsy. Not now. Tell me about it later. I want to go upstairs. When Father comes in, will you tell me right away? Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't go up. I've got to start cooking. What were you telling me about peanut butter? Just saying there isn't any. Liz. <laughs> Liz, you sound funny. Is anything wrong? <sighs> oh. Liz, Liz, you're crying. If we're out of peanut butter, why don't you go out and get some? Haven't you anything better to do than stand here? Oh, Patsy, I didn't mean to scold you. Is, is there anything wrong, Liz, that, that you want me to concentrate? No, no, go buy your peanut butter. I think there's a quarter in the jar. Don't forget to, to count the change. Peanut butter is 44 cents. 44 cents? Will somebody tell me what I'm going to feed these kids now? Oh, Papa... Liz? Uh, Bobby? Grayling? Liz, can I help? What is it? Later, precious. Not now. Who is it? It is I, my dear. Oh. Continue your activities. I'm going upstairs. Oh, Papa, wait a minute. There you are, Papa, darling. Did you have... Oh, Papa, you know. Yes. I know. You know what? What's going on around here? Who is the Lord smitten? Whom has the Lord smitten? Huh? Truly hath he smitten me and my house. Papa. Yes. Patsy, Patsy, darling. Are you a big girl now? Yes, you must be. We're terribly, terribly sorry, Patsy. The vestryman. Papa's looking for another church, Patsy. Oh, oh now, hush, dear. How did you find out, Papa? I happened to meet my friend, Albert Feckheimer. I was... Uh, oh, now it is. We must all make a very great effort now to seek courage from the source of all courage. We must rely on the faith within us. The Lord moves in devious ways his wonders to perform. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We must try to fortify each other, and, and I'm... I'm very sorry that your father is such a failure. Oh, Papa. Papa. Patricia, my dear little girl. No courage. Oh, it, it's Althea. It's her fault. She did it with her silliness. No, no, baby. How can you say that? I'm sure Althea actually feels worse than any of us deep down inside. Oh, Papa, I'm so terribly, terribly sorry. I'm concerned about Althea. I read her note and can only hope that she finds her way. What's going to happen to us now? Oh, oh gosh, I feel sick. Uh, now, now, children, my children, Liz, Patsy, this might be a test of my faith. There are many roads that have led me here, all designed to show me and us the meaning of my faith. When I begin to worry about money and a roof over our heads, then I'm not myself. Uh, My faith is no longer enough. Papa! <laughs> and now, this is Bill Owen, inviting you to listen again to The Brighter Day with Margaret Draper as Liz. Pat Hosley as Patsy, and Jay Meredith as Althea. Brought to you by Procter & Gamble, makers of Dreft, America's favorite brand for dishes. Also featured in today's show were Leslie Fagan as Papa and George Ansbro as Jerry. The sound effects were by Lynn Nadell and Bart Curtis, with music played by Ed Plute. 
The Brighter Day was produced by David Siegel and directed by Bill Nadell with engineering by Bill Sudamack. This is Bill Owen reminding you to be sure to listen again to The Brighter Day. This special production is a copyrighted feature of the Friends of Old Time Radio. This is NBC. We thank you. We thank you for a wonderful audience. We have a couple of minutes. The original Dennis sisters are all here to get. The original Dennis sisters are all here together, and uh, Pat Hosley did, did a wonderful job putting together the the giant posters that are outside. And they'll come up for a, a couple of questions if you want to talk to them about the brighter day. Uh, let's introduce Jay first, who's uh, come the longest way from the two of them to the convention. From Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> Uh, as you know, by Bill Owen's uh, book, The Brighter Day started in 1947 on NBC. We all auditioned for Ed Wolf, the director, and Oren Tavrov, the writer. It was Oren Tavrov's concept. He also wrote Ma Perkins, and I think if you'll listen carefully, you'll, you'll think about the styles. The styles are pretty much the same for Ma Perkins and The Brighter Day. Uh, kind of a goodliness per, uh, pervades the, the whole feeling of it. I call it the little women style. Uh, we bonded, we actually bonded, uh, the, the, the three of us certainly, and we've stayed friends all these years. The picture outside that you see with our nightgowns on, they, uh, well, there, was a, there was a big occasion and we were to appear and we didn't know quite what to wear. Well, Jay was pregnant, so we all wore nightgowns. <laughs> and uh, and the, uh, the brother wore a, a kind of a blousy type thing. But that was the glory of radio. You could have babies, and they could write you out and write you in, and nobody knew the difference. Uh, Althea was the beautiful one, and uh, she had a, a, a lots of boyfriends, but I guess the main one was Bruce, the rich boy in town. <clears throat> that was played by Jack Lemmon. I believe it was his first, one of his first jobs. Uh, was it? First in the, job for, on radio, and uh, oh, he was a darling. He didn't stay very long because he went on to greener fields, of course. Mm -hmm. And that's about all, except that we've stayed friends all these years. Our families are friends, and uh, it's just, I, I brought tears to my eyes. Margaret and Pat. <laughs> now, you come up with me. Come on, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, any questions? No. Anyone else? Anybody, any questions? I have a question. Have you ladies stay so beautiful? Oh. oh. <laughs> That's my husband speaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, had, I had eight bows on uh, guy, uh, the brighter day. Uh, but I didn't get to marry him until I met Wes Brown. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all I can say is that I've been back here uh, and met you all many times. And uh, whereas we we really do loving get, get love getting up here and and performing, but actually, you 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 get us back up there where you know it. it all really was and and you are not only you know you're blessing us too and and i thought about it today how you know with with your tapes and what you do you you continue to to live and 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 let the rest of the world live to to know how really we all think anyway that every day should be a brighter day so thank you very much i i, I I just want to say that when I spoke to Pat Hosley about putting the show together, uh, all of a sudden I got calls and letters from, from the other two. It was, like, it was like a family that was bombarding me with letters about how we should do it and this and that. And it was wonderful because they have still remained like sisters all these many years. And this is, this is a wonderful thing. And even though they're at very great distances from one another, uh, they still keep in contact. Is it weekly you call each other or something like that? Oh, we call. We call and we meet in New York and we meet different places and hug each other. And <laughs> it's a very loving relationship. Yeah. It is. And this is a rejuvenating uh, question voice. over we're, there. We're so happy. Question over there. Does anyone recall whether your father got his job back or not? Oh, sure. <laughs> yes, he, he, did. he went on to many jobs, right? Yes. 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 
And, we, and, and during the space of time, not only with Jack Lemmon did we work, but we worked with so many fine actors that also became friends. And it really was a, a, a wonderful show in that it did, you know, bring people together and continue with that same thought that same you heard feeling. tonight. Yes, the same feeling. feeling. Question over there in the back. In the back there? How long were you on the serial? How long were you on? Is it four or five years? Yes. I don't remember. It I sort remember. of took over by different people, different productions, different writers, <laughs> as many, you know, soap operas did. But the, the beginning of it and what we were in was exactly like the script. I mean, it was, it had excitement enough and everything, but it just was steady. It was mm -hmm. really yes. very good. Uh, it was sold by Oren Tavrov. He gave up the rights. And then Erna Phillips took over the writing, and they, then they had a different cast. They went to a different network. Arthur Anderson has a question. Uh, how long was the Brighter Day on, and who were the sponsors? Does draft? Draft, yeah. And oh, you mean Watson Gamble? Only clean products. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, a, there's another question in the back. <laughs> Erna, did Erna Phillips also do the guiding light? I believe so, yes. Oh, yes. yes. He wants to know how did the daytime serials manage to get to TV? Uh, I imagine when the advertising agency who got the product began to, you know, go into television, they drew people in. But they were very cautious in the beginning to get, you know, those, uh, the advertising people were very careful. It was a natural transition from yes. radio into TV, and very often uh, the actors uh, migrated with it, if possible. Mm -hmm. Any another question? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Was Hal Holbrook on this show? No. No, but I, I know Hal Holbrook, and he was great, oh, and he yes. he worked with all of us, I'm sure. Bill Smith did play the Reverend. The um, today we have uh, Leslie Fagan playing the Reverend. Yes, we're very yes. grateful. Thank yes, you. Yes, and are. George <laughs> Ansbro. Was the yeah. boyfriend? Yes, yeah. yeah. and, and of course Bill Owen, whose uh, wonderful book started up many of us collecting old radio programs. And we mustn't forget that Grayling was played by William Redfield, who was a dear, dear very, person very and a fine actor. Yeah. Okay, we really only have about a minute left. Is there any one last question? And then I'm going to throw it to Ed Clute to play the theme for us again. Ed, you're not prepared, but the, okay. We can do either. Oh, we have another question. Lovely. I guess, I, Ed, the, the theme, we have to leave this room so they can set up for dinner tonight. Well, one last question before the theme, yes. When did the show start and when did it end? Well, it started in 47, as I said, on NBC, but I don't know exactly... 56, I think. Oh. 1956, when many of the NBC soap operas left the air. Okay, Ed, can we give you a little music? A little music? Mm -hmm. 